Wow. Hello, Pennsylvania. What a great place. Thank you very much. You know, the pilot said it's too windy to land, sir. I said, that's okay. Land anyway. We have no choice. It's windy out here. It's windy, but it's beautiful. It's Pennsylvania. It's our place. I'm thrilled to be back in this beautiful Commonwealth with thousands of proud, hardworking American patriots. That's what you are. With your help, we're going to win Pennsylvania. We're going to defeat crooked Joe Biden. We're going to make America great again. Before going any further, I want to say God bless the people of Israel. They're under attack right now. That's, that's because we show great weakness. This would not happen. The weakness that we've shown is unbelievable, and it would not have happened if we were in office. You know that. They know that. Everybody knows that. But America prays for Israel. We send our absolute support to everyone in harm's way. This is an attack that would not have happened. I mean, to think about to think about what we have to go through and the things we put up with, with the border, with uh, no energy independence, with all electric cars. Would everybody like to buy an electric car for the rest of your life? But we will return the world to peace through strength, and it'll happen very quickly. We'll revive American strength abroad, and we will restore American strength at home. We were respected four years ago all over the world. Today, we are considered a joke. It's not going to be for long. Believe me, it's not going to be for long. We will quickly rebuild the greatest economy in the history of the world like we had it just four years ago. It was just announced that inflation is once again raging. It's close to 4 percent again. Here we go. When I left office, we had virtually no inflation. First of all, Crooked Joe, he claimed inflation was transitory. Remember that? Then he said it was temporary. Then he said it won't happen. It really won't happen. And then he said, well, it's much higher than expected. And then the supply chain closed. And then the energy went through the roof. Putin, Putin, they called it Putin price hikes. It wasn't only Putin. It was Putin and plenty of other things that Biden got wrong with Putin. Ukraine would have never happened. Israel attack both October 7th and today would have never happened. Then he blamed price gouging and junk fees. But all of America knows that the real blame for this nightmare lies with one person, crooked Joe Biden, as crooked as you can get. That's why the people of Pennsylvania are going to tell crooked Joe, you're fired. Get out. You're fired. One of the leading drivers of Biden's inflation disaster is his war on American energy, and Pennsylvania energy is our big problem. He's done everything wrong. Think of it. We've been in this mess together for three and a half years. Only a little more than six months until that most important day in the history of our country, November 5th. Think of that. Nothing. Has anything that he's done turned out? Everything he touches turns to shit. True. That's true. Under Biden, gasoline prices are up over 50 percent, and electricity prices are up 39 percent, rising 13 times faster than under the previous — think of that — 13 times faster than under the previous seven years. When I'm back in the White House, we will end Joe Biden's inflation train wreck, and we will tell Pennsylvania, drill, baby, drill, get back to drilling. 
Under my leadership, we had energy independence, and soon we would have had energy dominance. We were going to be dominant. We were bigger than Russia. We were bigger than Saudi Arabia. And then he stopped. But then he started again. He went back to Trump policies because the price started going up so high. But the day after the election, first of all, if he wins, our country is going to be destroyed. The day after the election, if he wins, he will stop drilling and he'll go back to wind, which doesn't work. He'll go back to all sorts of things that don't work. And they've proven that when it comes to Biden, he launched an extremist crusade actually to smash oil and gas. But Pennsylvania is one of the big oil and gas, largely due to me. He wanted to smash it. Biden has imposed a savage natural gas export ban that's putting countless Pennsylvania jobs at risk. He's risking your lives. He's risking your jobs. But he doesn't care because all he cares about is the Green New Scam, the Green New Deal, the Green New Scam. The Green New Scam, one of the biggest hoaxes. Biden's also trying to abolish gasoline-powered automobiles and force everyone into an all-electric car. But I have good news for you, all of you that love those trucks. He wants to make your truck all electric, too. No more gasoline powered. <laughs> On day one, I will terminate Crooked Joe's insane electric vehicle mandate. Gone. Day one. That's going to happen on day one. And I'll end Joe Biden's natural gas export ban on behalf of the people of Pennsylvania, who I love. I went to school here, right? I went to school in Pennsylvania. I love Pennsylvania. As we rescue our economy, we will also rescue our democracy. Our democracy is under, really under siege. Our Second Amendment is under siege, but not with me, it's not. With me, they don't touch it. But our Second Amendment is under siege. Our democracy is under siege because of Joe Biden. Joe Biden loves to say that democracy is on the ballot in this election. If it is, we're going to win in the greatest landslide in history. Because we're the ones who are fighting to save our democracy. And Crooked Joe Biden is the demented tyrant. He's a demented tyrant who is trying to destroy our democracy. Two days from now, the entire world will witness the commencement of the very first Biden trial. They're all Biden trials. You know that, right? And I'm proud to do it for you. Have a good time watching. Have a good time watching. On Monday in New York City, I will be forced to sit fully gagged. I'm not allowed to talk. Can you believe it? They want to take away my constitutional right to talk. I have a crooked judge. This has never happened before, by the way. You do know that, right? Fully gagged before a highly conflicted and corrupt judge who suffers from TDS. Does anyone know what TDS is? <laughs> Correct. Trump derangement syndrome. As the radical left Democrat Party seeks to do anything possible to keep me from running and winning in this election. And let me tell you, we're leading by so much, they don't know what's happening. But you know what they'd love to do? I did nothing wrong from day one. I did nothing. You had Russia, Russia. You had Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. You had every hoax imaginable. With all of the things they did, with millions of pages of study, they found nothing, which makes me perhaps the most honest guy almost in the world, I think. They found nothing. But like all true communist show trials, this is what you call a communist show trial. And we're going communist. Don't kid yourself. We don't win this election. This country is finished. Thank you very much. I love you, too. I love you, too. That's why I put up with this stuff. Remember, I've been indicted more than Al Capone, the great gangster. I never heard the word indictment. I didn't know. Now, all of a sudden, if I fly over a Democrat state, they call it a blue state, I get subpoenaed before a grand jury. 
It's horrible. Honestly, it's horrible what they're doing. They're ruining this country. They're destroying the country in every way. There's not a thing he's done that's been good. But this is a case of blatant manipulation of the law and the facts, like Russia, 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 and all of the other hoaxes that we've had to endure. The phony indictment has been torn apart and demolished by legal experts from across the political spectrum. Every single legal expert, without exception that I can find, has said, as an example, Alan Dershowitz. Alan Dershowitz said, I've been doing this for 60 years, teaching criminal cases, defending criminal cases, writing about criminal cases, and this is by far the weakest criminal case I've ever seen in my 60 years. There is absolutely nothing here. There is no misdemeanor. There is no felony. There is no federal crime. Every American is in danger if we don't have an objective standard of justice that's equally applicable to all. That's Alan Dershowitz. He's a Democrat. He's no fan of mine. He's a Democrat and a Harvard professor, smart guy. But he's a Democrat. He writes that. Here's another one. Highly respected former federal prosecutor Andrew McCarthy stated, it would take us an hour just to flush out all of the problems with this case. The premise of this prosecution is falsification. What Bragg, that's Alvin Bragg, he's a Soros-appointed prosecutor. And by the way, crime in New York is at record highs. The violent crime, murders, killings, all of the stuff, muggings, and he leaves them alone. They've got some, when I go into court over nothing, it's not a crime. When I go into court, they've got like nine prosecutors. And in the meantime, people that murder, nobody does anything. What Bragg, Alvin Bragg, is trying to do is enforce federal campaign finance law, which he doesn't have any authority whatsoever to do. He's not allowed to finance. And by the way, the federal government looked at it, turned it down. It's a garbage case that he himself rejected a year earlier. When Bragg came into office, he's the district attorney. He said, I'm not doing this case. This case is bullshit. And then what happens? He does the case. And you know, here's the thing. They could have done this case seven years ago. You know the way they're trying to rush it? This case would have been fine. Seven years ago, do whatever you want. They do it right smack in the middle of our election campaign. And I talk about our campaign. We want to do it now. And the same thing with deranged Jack Smith, all of these people. These are Biden people. He can't win an election. He can't put two sentences together. He can't find the stairs on a platform to walk off after he makes about a two-minute speech. Here they are. I got one, two, three. I got one in the back. I got them all over the place. He can't find them. He's looking around. Where are the stairs? All they're trying to do, they're weaponizing government. They're trying to harm your favorite president, hurt him, so that we can't win an election. They've weaponized elections like a third world country, like a banana republic. Renowned legal scholar, very smart guy, Jonathan Turley likewise stated, it's a real Frankenstein case. It's made up of different parts that don't hold together. And it's frightening if this can be replicated in the future. You can't do cases like this. This is an outrage. A veteran New York City attorney told Left Wing Rolling Stone magazine, this is a magazine that I've never read, but probably doesn't like Trump. Left Wing is, to put it mildly, this case, they say, this is Rolling Stone. This case is a joke, frankly, and I've litigated against this office for 33 years. This case is an absolute joke. These are people that hate me, they're saying this. Can you imagine if they liked me, how good they'd be? And a liberal Fordham University law professor writing in the New York Times called the case a disaster, a legal embarrassment, and a setback to the rule of law and order and a really bad thing for New York. And businesses aren't going to move into New York because of what they're doing. Their legal system is shot. It's a joke all over the world. But when I walk into that courtroom, I know I will have the love of 200 million Americans behind me, and I will be fighting for the... That's right. That's right. And I will be fighting for the freedom of 325 million Americans. This election is a choice between the Biden fascist state or the American Republic. It's called 
We are going to make this country so great again, and we're going to do it fast. We're going to do it really fast. You know, right now, millions of people are entering our country from prisons, from mental institutions. They're coming from all over the world, all over the world. A vote for Joe Biden is a vote to end the rule of law, and it's a vote to destroy America as you know it. A vote for Donald Trump is a vote to save America's future, a vote to save American democracy, and a vote to save American freedom. And as I say, and I've said tonight, and I'll say it again and again, and I mean it so much, you know, when we had a beautiful November day, 2016, we won an election, and people are still angry about it because we weren't anticipated. They rig everything. We weren't anticipated to win that election. And what I've done to insult them is we won that election, and then we did much better in 2020 than we did in 2016, getting millions and millions of votes more. But this is going to be really special because, I will tell you, 2016, we had spirit like nobody's ever seen before. 2020 blew the spirit away of 2016. We had not only do we get millions more votes, I think the spirit was even greater. But now, because we've seen how bad they are, added to the fact that you like the job I do, you like the fact that countries respect us, you like the fact that we were energy independent on all of the things, do you like the fact that I got you the largest tax cut in the history of our country? And they're going to raise your taxes by four times. Four times. Think of that. Take your taxes and multiply times four. That's what you're going to be paying if this, if this person, this person, this person gets in. But I say this, and I say it. I said in 2016 that this is going to be the most important election we've ever had. But I say now, because 2016, I won to a certain extent on the border. And then I fixed the border. And when I fixed it, I wanted to make speeches in 2020 about the border. And my people said, sir, but the difference is I listen to myself. I don't listen to anybody. He listens to his people. He listens to his communist handlers, okay? He does whatever they want him to do. But my people did say, sir, they don't want to hear about the border. You fixed it. I said, I want to talk about the border. They said, sir, you fixed it. We went on. We had an unbelievable election, getting millions more votes than we did in 2016. But the election was rigged. The election was rigged. Pure and simple, 2020 was rigged. It was a disgrace. We could never let it happen again. The difference, though, is this is compared to 2016 and the border. This border is a hundred times worse. This is the worst border of any country in the history of the world. There has never been a border like this, where millions and millions and millions of people are coming in totally unchecked and unvetted. The American people are going to stand up, and they're going to stand up to the lies and the witch hunt and the corruption of Biden. He is the most incompetent president in the history of our country. He is the most corrupt president in the history of our country. And he is the worst president by far in the history of our country. And on we have to get him out. On November 5th, we have to get Biden the hell out of office and send him back to wherever he comes from. We have to get him out. Thank you very much. We have to get him out. You know, you look at all the things that are happening, everything, the whole world is ablaze. You know, it's interesting, Viktor Orban, who is the Prime Minister of Hungary, very strong guy, very strong person. I think happens to be a very good person, but a very strong person, doesn't play games, didn't want any illegal immigrants in his country. You know, then they say, oh, he's such a bad. Well, they asked him three weeks ago, 
What's going on with the world? What's going on? Everybody's fighting Russia, Ukraine, Israel. The Middle East is blowing up. Everything's blowing up. China's going to be next with Taiwan because of weakness. China's going to be next. What's going on? He said, bring Donald Trump back as president and it'll all stop. It'll all stop. He said it. And he said something else that I wouldn't say it because I wouldn't really like the word. China was afraid of Donald Trump. Russia was afraid of Donald Trump. Everybody was afraid. I don't want to say that. I want to say they respected me. But the fact is, none of this stuff would be happening. None of it would be happening right now. We'd have a country that would be peaceful, prosperous. We would have, we would have had no inflation. Inflation was caused by energy. This stupid person, what he did with energy was that it went up 40, 50, 60 percent. That affects everything. Everything. If you make donuts, everything is more expensive. It's so bad. When you look at food prices now, where it's gone up by double and triple and quadruple, and you can never get that back, but we're going to get it way down, I promise you. And we're going to bring your energy so low we're going to bring your energy prices so low that other things will follow. And that's what happened. It's very simple. Instead of trying to have corrupt prosecutors fight his battles, what he's doing, he's incompetent. And what he's doing, and it's not, I don't believe it's even him. I think it's the people that want to keep their jobs around him. They're communists. They want to keep their job because I don't think he has, I don't think he has any clue. I don't think he has any clue. So listen. What, we have a little look at this one. That's for him. Very, it's slight. I call it slight. See the podium. I'm calling on Crooked Joe Biden to debate anytime, anywhere, any place. Right there. We have to debate because our country is going in the wrong direction so badly. And while it's a little bit typically early, we have to debate. We have to explain to the American people what the hell is going on because they're looking at the border and they're looking at inflation and they're looking at the economy, which is terrible. They're looking at every single aspect of our country. They look at the fact that the world is laughing at our leader and laughing at us. And just four years ago was the exact opposite. We were the most respected country in the world. We were the most respected that we were ever respected. Nobody, we were never more respected than we were four years ago. It's no wonder Joe Biden and his thugs, that's all they are, their weak thugs are so desperate to stop us. They know that we are the only ones who can stop them. And all of this persecution of Donald Trump, I don't mind, I'll, I'm doing it for you. I'm doing it for you. But all of this persecution is only happening because I'm running for president and leading very big in the polls. We're leading so big, they are going crazy. They are going crazy. In the Wall Street Journal, they just came out with a poll. We're leading big in a place called, have you ever heard of Pennsylvania? And nationwide, we're leading by four points, six points, nine points, 11 points. We're leading by a lot. Now, they cheat, so we have to give ourselves a lead. They cheat like hell. And when you see them cheating, you get out there and start screaming. Start screaming. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election in 2020, and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election of 2024. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor because I am being indicted for you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Never forget, our enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never, ever, ever let them take away your freedom. I will not let it happen. That's what they're trying to do. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me. They're after you. And I just happen to be standing in their way. And I always will be in their way.
So job number one is going to be, and as soon as we take office, we will seal the border. Is that okay? And we're going to stop the invasion and send Joe Biden's illegal aliens back home. We had the safest border, the most secure border in the history of our country four years ago. The safest border in the history of our country. There are charts out that just came out from Homeland Security, if you can believe that. And uh, I don't know where the hell your board is. Put it up instead of the back of my head. I'd love to have that chart. But it shows that the lowest number ever of illegal immigrants coming in was my last week in office before this very, very, very horrible president took over. You know, one thing good about it, though, Jimmy Carter's a nice man. Jimmy Carter looks like a brilliant president by comparison <laughs> to Crooked Joe Biden. Crooked Joe Biden, he is, uh, he is the worst. Jimmy, Jimmy Carter is a happy man. Oh! Hey, that's a good staff. I didn't think that fine, that one. That's the one. See the arrow in the bottom? That's when I, exactly when I went, see the, see the number? That's the lowest number in the history of our country, the week that I went out. And then look at, after that, it looks like a rocket ship. It's a rocket ship of illegal immigrants and people that we have no idea where the hell they come from. People don't even know the names of the country. The people coming here don't even know the names of the country from which they came. And you see the right-hand side when it goes up? If you extend the chart a little bit, we could modernize it a little bit, add another 25 percent. There has never been anything like it. In Venezuela, violent crime is down 67 percent because they're taking their gangs and their thugs and their criminals and dumping them all across the United States of America. How about that? How about that? They're sending prisoners, murderers, drug dealers, mental patients, and terrorists, the worst anywhere in the world. These are the, the only thing good about their, their criminals is they make our criminals like nice people. Because our criminals, I think, are much nicer than their criminals. But, you know, people think, oh, isn't it wonderful the migrants are flowing in? These migrants are coming from mental institutions, insane asylums. They're terrorists. They're coming from prisons and jails. There's a little difference. They're coming from prisons and jails by the millions. Are we crazy to take this? This man, what he has done, you know, I say it often. I say it at the rallies. This is a nice rally, by the way. This is a hell of a rally. I just heard there are 42,000. You know, we expected maybe, because it's freezing, right? It's freezing. I'm freezing my ass off up here. At least they could have given me a little bit of a heater underneath this. They gave me nothing. See, they take advantage. My own people take advantage of me. They gave me nothing. But uh, it's one of those things, isn't it? But, you know, we expected maybe 10,000 people. We have 42,000 people tonight. 42,000. As far as the eye can see, I wish, the, I wish the fake news media would turn those cameras. Look at all those cameras. Wow. 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 Wow, that's a lot. You know what? I wish they'd turn those cameras back and all the way back as far as the eye can see, yeah, people. And I hate like hell to give them the prime spot, the media, because they don't deserve. Look where that goes back to. That's, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. But they never turn the cameras. You know what? Even our so-called friends, I won't get into it, who's our so-called friend, they never turn the cameras. And I always thought, you know, I'd say, please turn the camera, show the crowd. You'd think that would be good for, per you know, like for television purposes, positive. They, they're showing these big crowds. They never want to show that we have these giant crowds because they don't like it, because they don't want us to win, because they're basically progressive. They don't use liberal anymore. They don't like the term. They call it progressive. I think progressive is a beautiful word, but it doesn't apply to them. It doesn't. It's too good a word. So we'll call them liberal. But they're liberal. 
and they don't want to do it. And you know what? I thought for when I first started this, they wouldn't. I'd say, turn around and show the crowd, show the crowd, show the crowd. And look at all these cameras. So we had all these cameras from day one. We never had an empty seat. We literally, you know, figuratively speaking, because we don't have too many seats. We had people standing. But we never had an empty spot. We never had an empty seat. I'd say, show the people behind you. Show all the people. They wouldn't do it. And then a fight broke out in the darkest, deepest corner of the place. A fight. And those cameras turned around like a pretzel. They could do it. I thought they were just steel. The cameras turned around like a pretzel to show the fight because that's a bad thing. Go. months and they're all military age and they mostly are men and it sounds like to me are they trying to build a little army in our country is that what they're trying to do and biden doesn't know because the guy doesn't have a clue this is country changing this is country threatening and it's country wrecking they're destroying our country they're wrecking our country as a citizen i demand that joe biden close the border immediately close it close the border joe you can do it he doesn't need Congress. You know, as president, I never had Congress tell me to close the border. I closed the border. Again, the best border, the safest border in the history of our country. I built 571 miles of wall. I got Mexico to give us thousands of soldiers free of charge to protect us while we were building the wall. We were going to add 200 miles of wall. And then we had a rigged election. And he took over. And you know what he did? He sold all of it. Was, all you had to do is it would have been done in three weeks. He sold it for five cents in the dollar. He sold our beautiful wall panels. People want our country. It's true, though. It, can you imagine that? That's when I realized this guy actually believes. Think of the things they believe in. High taxes. They're going to quadruple your taxes. Uh, they're going to destroy your Social Security because all of these people putting in are going to make it impossible for them to service Social Security. You're not going to have Social Security. Biden is killing your Social Security and your Medicare. But think of little things like, for instance, he wants to have men play in women's sports, okay? Now, I don't use that. I mean, I think it's terrible, but... I don't, I just say from a common sense, isn't it ridiculous? I'm always, I'm always embarrassed when I say, and I will stop men from playing in women's play. Who the hell would care? Did you see the weightlifting record the other day? I mean, I don't want to get into it. It's very demeaning to women and I love women more than I love anything. I love them. But it's very demeaning. A record that stood for years and years. They couldn't beat it. They just couldn't do it. They'd put like a half an ounce on one side. They'd put a half an ounce of that barbell. And that woman got up and she's a champ and she couldn't do it. She just couldn't. And mom and dad, it was very sad. Mom and dad are in the front row. But they put a little bit on one side, a little bit on the other. It was a world record stood for a long time. And then what happened? The guy comes up who happened to change his gender, right? Gender, proper word, right? They said, have you lifted before? No, I haven't. Oh, well, give it a shot. He goes like this. Bing, 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 bing. I think he broke the record by 129 pounds, didn't he? Like 120. For years, they couldn't do a, an ounce. Half an ounce, half an ounce. They couldn't do an ounce. He broke the record by 129 pounds. Are we crazy? How about the swimmer? She's a world-class swimmer, and she was badly injured, as you know, badly, badly injured. She was a top swimmer. She grew up with the top swimmers all over California, all over the country, and she was in, and she wanted to break that record. She was going to break it, too. She was close. She looked left just before the whistle went off. She looked left, and there was people she's grown up with for 15 years. She swam against them. She looked right, 
And there were people for 15 years she swam against them. She knew every one of them. They were all good, but she, she was better. But then she looked to her very right, right here, and there was this giant human being. A man who about three weeks before was a man. But now he's a woman. And she was seriously injured. You know why, right? Because he went by her so fast that the wind burn was just more than she could do. They immediately took her to the hospital. She suffered massive wind burn from the speed at which he went by her. And she was trying to break the record by one-tenth of one second. He broke the record by 37 seconds. Are we crazy? Is it crazy, really? Just this week, it was reported that an illegal alien, if they, and you just look at this, what's happening, but it was reported that an illegal alien migrant from Afghanistan who is on the terror watch list was released into the United States along with many other terrorists by crooked Joe Biden, despite being a member of a terrorist group which is responsible for the slaughter of American troops in Afghanistan. He was looked for all over the world. They're looking for him. And he's in our country now, and we're looking for him. Isn't that wonderful? He should never have been here. You know, I had a report that came out recently, and it was on, I think it was on Deface the Nation. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Donald Trump on Deface the Nation. But I think it was Deface the Nation or Meet the Fake Press. And it showed charts, and it actually had in 20, I think it was 2019, that was my, one of my years, terrorist into our nation, zero. It actually said zero. I don't even believe that. I mean, I want to believe it, but that's hard to believe, right? But it actually said zero. And then you go on to 2021, 2022, and they had thousands of people pouring in, terrorists. But it actually said 2019, zero, zero. I don't believe that, but I know it was very low because we really watched it closely. We watched it like nobody has ever watched it. And I was very proud of that. I was very, it's probably the only time they ever said anything that was actually better than the fact, right? Right here in Eastern Pennsylvania, you had an illegal alien criminal who murdered a woman in Chester County, stabbing her 38 times in front of her seven-year-old daughter and her four-year-old son, a violent criminal. He was a violent, violent person. Then in September, that same illegal alien escaped from Chester County Prison and prowled through suburban communities. You all know about him. Hiding in backyards, breaking into homes until he was found with a stolen gun, and he was ready to do massive damage all over your community. Joe Biden's border bloodbath. That's what it is. It's a bloodbath, a word that they misrepresented. His border bloodbath ends the day I take the oath of office. We will stop the plunder, the rape, the slaughter, the destruction of American suburbs and cities and towns. We will end deadly sanctuary cities. You know, the Democrat mayors want to all end them, but they don't want to, you know, really take on because they end up getting indicted. You know, they go after these people. When they go against, when they go against D.C. establishment, they end up getting indicted. So the Democrat mayors don't like sanctuary cities, but they're afraid to get indicted. I will shift massive portions of federal law enforcement to immigration enforcement. We will enforce our immigration laws stricter and stronger than anybody has ever done, including me, including me. We will impose a naval blockade on the cartels. You know, when we stopped them on land, they, they're very rich. They had ships, the most beautiful ships you've ever seen. I mean, these guys are loaded, nothing but cash. And they were having boats and ships on the ocean, on the ocean, the Gulf, come in through different ways. They're very ingenious. The only thing they understand is strength. They understand strength and it'll all stop. You know, when I met with President Xi of China, I said, do you have a drug problem? No, 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 we have no drug problem. Why is that? Quick trial. I said, tell me about a quick trial. When they catch the seller of drugs, right, the purveyor of drugs, they immediately give them, the drug dealers, they immediately give them a trial. It takes one day, one day, at the end of that day, if they're guilty, which they always are, according to people that study this, I think, I don't think anybody has never been guilty. 
within one day that person is executed. They execute their — they execute the drug dealers. They have zero drug problem. Zero. They have zero drug problem in Singapore and other places. Instead, we set up blue ribbon committees made of dilettantes from all over the country that know nothing about the — the genius, the, the evil genius of these drug lords that are taking us for a ride, and the cartels that are making billions and billions of dollars because Joe Biden is a stupid person. We have a — we have a president who's a stupid person. On day one, we will begin the largest domestic deportation operation in the history of our country. So we're pleased to be joined on this extremely beautiful but little chilly, like about, you know. But chilly, this is not bad. When I won the primary in Iowa, we won in a record. By the way, on the primaries, every single primary, we won in the record of uh, numbers that have never been gotten before. From Iowa to New Hampshire, we won the caucuses, the Iowa caucuses in double the margin that had ever been won before. We won New Hampshire, the largest number of votes ever gotten in the primary. Now, think of this, Republican or Democrat. Now, you had Kennedy up there. You know, it's a little area for the Kennedys. It's a, and others. We got more votes than anybody has ever gotten in New Hampshire. We went to Nevada. We went all over. We went to South Carolina. We beat a certain governor there by so much. It's so much. You know, I'm the only one that can absolutely beat somebody by numbers that are unbelievable. And they say, and, and set a record in doing it. It was a record. And then I have to hear, he should have done better. Should have done better. In Nevada, we set the record. We set the record in every single state, every single state. So I'm very honored by it. And it's uh, really great. Really great. You know what bothers me, though? This bothers me. I'm always watching. Joe Biden and Donald Trump are the two candidates. They are both very unpopular people. I'm not unpopular. You know, he is unpopular. He is unpopular. But I am not unpopular. With 95 percent in the Republican Party and a lot of Democrats are going to vote for us because they don't want to have open borders and drugs for everybody. OK, they don't want to have it. They don't want to have a nation that's not respected and wars that take place. Thank you. We want Trump. 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 Thank you. Thank you. But do you ever hear it? Joe Biden and Donald Trump are two very unpopular people. I'm not. And in all fairness to this guy, I mean, I don't get it because he can't speak. He can't walk. He almost fell out of a helicopter the other day. I mean, there's only four stairs. He held on for dear life. Oh, thank you. Those, those two fingers were just strong enough to hold him. But you know, in all fairness to him, he beat all the competition. He beat it. Now, they did things that aren't impre You know, what they did to Kennedy was terrible. They did what they did. That's what they do. They're fascists, okay? But what they did was terrible. But he did beat the competition. He did it, I think, probably unfairly, just like they cheated on the last election. But they did beat the competition. But I'm really popular. And I'm popular not necessarily. I think I have a nice personality. What do you think? I think so. And it's not terrible. Our great first lady said, I can't imagine why they think you're not a nice person. She might be kidding when she says that. I don't know. But, but you know, I get these levels of pop. I'm, I'm popular. Ronald Reagan was at 86 percent. Donald Trump is at 95 percent. That's popular, right? So why do these thugs and these fake news people, and there's so many cameras back there, I can't believe, that's a lot of cameras. But you know what? Whenever I start talking about them, the cameras go off because I start talking about how bad they are. They're less popular than Congress. Can you believe that? And speaking of Congress, but we have great ones. We only deal with the great ones. And we have great people here that love our country and they're members of Congress. Dan Muser, Dan. Lloyd Schmucker. Lloyd, where is Lloyd? He's around here someplace. 
Lloyd, where are you? Yes? Hi, Lloyd. These are great people. Former congressman, he was a great congressman, Fred Keller. Where's Fred? Hi, Fred. Are you cold in there? You don't have a coat? He's all man, that guy. I'd like to do that, too, but I just refuse to freeze. I love these guys. Well, Mike Kelly, he used to come up with just an undershirt on. It would be like two degrees out. But he's a very special guy. Mike Kelly. What a great guy. State Treasurer Stacy Garrity. Whoa. Beautiful, beautiful person. She's a beautiful person. State Senator Jarrett Coleman. Jarrett. Where's Jarrett? Hi, Jarrett. Good job you're doing. State Representative Zach Mako. And Mulo McKenzie. And we have a special person with us tonight. RNC chairman just newly installed. He's a tough cookie. He's going to stop voter theft. He's going to stop steal the vote. He's going to he's going to stop stop the steal. We have lots of different. The bottom line is we don't need any votes. We have all the votes. What we need is on Election Day, which unfortunately is now called election period because some of these things go 48 days. What the hell are they doing for 48 days? You know what they're doing? They're stealing the vote. But this guy was the head of the Republican Party in North Carolina, and North Carolina was solid. It wasn't like Pennsylvania. It wasn't like other places that went wah at the very end when all those votes came in or late or early in the morning. Remember, we won Pennsylvania. We were up like by hundreds of thousands of votes. We said, and then all of a sudden, wah. And we all know what happened. But it didn't happen in North Carolina, and it's not going to happen in Pennsylvania, and it's not going to happen in Georgia this time. It's not going to happen. RNC Chairman Michael Watley. Michael. Great job, Michael. That was like, uh, he had 600 lawyers working for him, and there was nobody tougher on Stop the Steal. And thank you also to our super volunteers, Mike O'Hare and Al Smith, Bob Smith and Jessica Ware. They've been unbelievable, the job they've done from day one. And they've been with me, and they said, we've never seen enthusiasm like this time. The one said, Jessica said, you know, in 2016, it was good, really good. It was incredible. It was like a happening. 2020 was just as good and maybe even better, sir. This blows both of them away. And I think it's true. Because you know what? You look at this crowd. You look at this crowd, which you can't see the end of it. But you look at this crowd. And in all fairness, we're six and a half months away from that's a long time. Most of these candidates on the night before the election would have a crowd that would be their largest crowd, and they wouldn't have anywhere near the people that we have right now. We're six and a half months away. I wish we could move the election to Tuesday. Is there anything we can do? I want to move the election to Tuesday. You know, in the UK, they can pick their election. They say, we're going to have the election next week. I want to be able to do that. Would that be possible? From the very first day that we take back the White House from crooked Joe Biden, I believe we're going to have the four greatest years in the history of our country. In my first four years, I kept my promise to Pennsylvania, and we ended the disaster known as NAFTA, the worst trade deal ever made, and replaced it with the brand new USMCA, that's Mexico, Canada, the best trade deal they say ever made for our country. And frankly, I know it's good because Mexico and Canada want to redo it. They want to renew it and they want it uh, changed. And crooked Joe Biden will probably do it. How much? How much? Give me give me a couple of million bucks. I'll get it done. How much will it take to get crooked Joe? Don't change the USMCA. They took advantage of, of us with NAFTA for years. Don't change it. Don't change it. They have to have it. But it's always nice when you make a deal and they want to change it. I took on communist China like no administration in history, bringing in hundreds of billions of dollars, pouring into our treasury when no other president had gotten even 10 cents. China gave no other president 10 cents. I also gave $28 billion out of that money. I gave it to our farmers. And I put powerful tariffs on foreign aluminum and foreign steel, which kept the steel industry in our country going and vibrant. But now 
Biden is changing that. We're going to end up with no steel industry with this guy. Can you imagine? We're in a war, and we need steel to build our ships and build our tanks, and we don't have any. You're in a war with China, and we need, because you see what's going on today, we're very close. We're very close to a world war. We're in a war with China, and we need steel. So our guys, Joe Biden, will call China. Listen, uh, could any deal, can we make a deal? Can we have some steel? We have to build army tanks to protect us from you. This is where we are. Our country is, is sick. Our country is, a, is sick. We're like a house that's burning down. And it all happened over the last three years. And we've got to turn it around. We love our country. We've got to turn it around. We've got to turn it around fast. Under Biden, U.S. Steel is being so think of this. United States Steel Company, one of the great companies of the world 50 years ago, is being sold to Japan. Congratulations, Japan. U.S. Steel is being sold to Japan on my next term. You love that one, don't you? <laughs> Who would believe that, U.S. Steel? I would not let that deal go through. In my next term, I will pass the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act. If China or any other country makes us pay a tariff or tax of 100 or 200 percent, we will make them pay a reciprocal tariff of 100 or 200 percent. And you know what that is, basically? You screw us, and we screw you. And then everybody is even. And you know what happens? There's no tax, because everyone says, just forget it. We will always protect Social Security and Medicare for our great seniors. Biden can't do that. As president, I kept that promise, and I will keep it once again. I didn't touch your Social Security or your Medicare, and there were plenty of Democrats that said, do it. We're not doing it. You know, we have liquid gold under our feet, so much so that we don't use. We don't have to do things that people think. We have more liquid gold, oil, gas, a lot of things, coal, coal. You know, coal fires up the plants. Do you know that China right now is building a massive coal plant every single week? They're opening up a coal plant every single week while we struggle with wind. Where's the wind? You know the other problem? We can't get the windmills. You know why? They're made in China. China says, don't worry about America. We'll give them. But wind doesn't work anywhere. It's too expensive. It doesn't work. Kills all your birds. If you'd like to see a nice bird cemetery, walk under a windmill sometime. You'll see more dead birds than anything. You know, if you shoot an American eagle like a bald eagle, they put you in jail for five years. But the windmill, kill, they kill them by the thousands. You know that, right, Mr. Congressman? They kill them by the thousands. So we're very off as a country. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after we win the presidency, it's we. I will have the horrible war. That's right. I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine totally settled. I will settle it. And I will pre and I'm the only one that can say this, because these other people have no clue. I will prevent World War III. And remember, World War III would be a war like no other because of nuclear weapons and many other types of weapons that are at a level that nobody can even imagine. You don't even want to talk about it. We're going to rebuild our cities into beacons of hope, safety, and beauty better than they have ever been before. We're going to rebuild our cities, and we're going to work with Democrat mayors and Democrat governors if we have to, but we're going to rebuild our cities because our cities are going to hell. We will take over the horribly run capital of our nation in Washington, D.C., and clean it up, renovate it, and rebuild our capital city so that it's no longer a nightmare of murder and crime. Do you see the crime that's going on in Washington, our beautiful Washington, D.C.? People are being murdered all the time. They come from Pennsylvania, and they want to go and see our capital, and they get murdered. So much crime, so much horrible, violent crime. But rather, it will become the most beautiful capital anywhere in the world. We're going to clean it up, and we're going to make it safe so our congressmen can walk into that wonderful place that should be a wonderful place. And right now, it looks like hell. It's filthy, dirty with graffiti all over the place, garbage all over the streets, roads with potholes. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity. 
or other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto the lives of our children. I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. And as I very embarrassingly said before, I will keep men out of women's sports, okay? And I will fully uphold our great Second Amendment, which is so important. You know, for four years, despite tremendous efforts by the Democrats on the Second Amendment, we didn't budge an inch. We didn't budge an inch. And I think you all know that. We will protect innocent life and we will restore free speech and we will do it quickly. And I will secure our elections. We're going to end up paper ballots, same day voting and voter ID. Our goal will be, our goal will be that we want to have paper ballots. We want to have proof of citizenship. We want now, because you know, they have all these people coming in. We want proof of citizenship. It's very important. But until then, Republicans must win. We want a landslide that is too big to rig. If you get the numbers, too big to rig. I love these people. Look, they're huddled together. They're huddled together. It's freezing out here. They're huddled together. I love it. It's freezing. I hope they know each other. Do those people, they're like, they're so close. I've never seen, I hope you're related. <laughs> I don't know if they are. I think that he'd never met her in his life. And his wife is sitting right over here. This is, this is not a good situation. This is, this is politically unacceptable, sir. I have to call you out. If you took the 10 worst presidents in the history of the United States and added them up, they would not have done near the destruction to our country as Joe Biden and the Biden administration have done. The worst president in history. So if you want to save America, then get everyone you know, register them, register Republican, and vote. The Pennsylvania primary is Tuesday, April 23rd. Go out and vote. And you know what, sir? You know what? Somebody that you have to vote for. All our congressmen are in great shape, right, Dan? I think you're in great shape. All of them are in great shape. Everybody, they've all got... But I am officially giving my endorsement to David McCormick tonight. He's a good man. He wants to run a good ship. He's a smart guy. He was a very successful guy. He's given up a lot to do this. And I'll tell you what, he's the nominee of the Republican Party. David McCormick, go out and vote for him because Casey doesn't do a damn thing. I tell you, he doesn't do a thing. So go out and vote for him. Sign up. Volunteer for our campaign and let's win big in November. In conclusion, and in conclusion, together we are taking on some of the most menacing forces and vicious opponents our people have ever seen. They are vicious and they are horrible. But no matter how hateful and corrupt the communists and criminals we're fighting against may be, you must never forget this nation does not belong to them. This nation belongs to you. This is your home. This is your heritage. And our American liberty is your God-given right. Your God-given right. From Harrisburg to Pittsburgh, from Easton to Bethlehem, and from Johnstown to Allentown, we stand on the shoulders of American legends who poured out their blood, sweat, and tears for our rights and for our freedoms. And it's been a very rough period of time, I'll tell you what, for this country, it's never had. I don't think our country has ever been so low, but we're going to change it. We're going to get numbers like nobody's ever seen. I think we're going to swamp them. And this isn't, this isn't drain the swamp. This is we're going to swamp them. We're also going to drain the swamp. It's a double swamp. Pennsylvania's where our founding fathers declared American independence. So much history. I mean, you have so much history here. Just think of it. It's where the army weathered its brutal winter. We're sort of weathering it right now, but I don't think. <laughs> Theirs was much worse. It's where the army weathered its brutal winter at Valley Forge, where General George Washington led his men on a daring mission across the Delaware, and where our union was saved by the immortal heroes at Gettysburg. Gettysburg, what an unbelievable 
battle that was, the Battle of Gettysburg. What an unbelievable — I mean, it was so much and so interesting and so vicious and horrible and so beautiful in so many different ways. It, it represented such a big portion of the success of this country. Gettysburg, wow. I go to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, to look and to watch. And uh, the statement of Robert E. Lee, who's no longer in favor — did you ever notice that? No longer in favor. Never fight uphill, me boys. Never fight uphill. They were fighting uphill. He said, wow, that was a big mistake. He lost his great general, and uh, they were fighting. Never fight uphill, me boys. But it was too late. And this is the state where generations of tough, strong Pennsylvania miners, factory workers, and steel workers forged the greatest nation in the history of the world. But now we are a nation in decline. We are a failing nation. We are a nation that has lost its confidence, willpower, and strength. We are a nation that has lost its way. But we are not going to allow this horror to continue. Three years ago, we were a great nation. And we will soon be a great nation again. And remember, it was hardworking patriots like you who built this country. And it's hardworking patriots like you who are going to save our country. We will fight for America like no one has ever fought before. 2024 is our final battle. That is our final battle. We are either going to have a great nation again or we're going to have a failed nation. With you at my side, we will demolish the deep state. We will expel the warmongers from our government. We will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communist, Marxist, and fascists. We will throw off the sick political class that hates our country. We will rout the fake news media. We will drain the swamp. And we will liberate our country from these tyrants and villains. Once and for all, they are tyrants. They are villains, and they hate our country. Like those patriots before us, we will not bend, we will not break, we will not yield. We will never give in, we will never give up, and we will never, ever, ever, ever back down. With your support, we will go on to victory, the likes of which no one has ever seen. And we will evict crooked Joe Biden, the worst president in the history of our country, from the White House on November 5th, 2024. And that date will go down as the most important day in American history. I believe that, because we're ready to be a failed nation. We're a failed nation right now. The great silent majority is rising like never before. And under our leadership, the forgotten man and woman will be forgotten no longer. It wasn't forgotten four years ago, I can tell you that. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together, we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again.